Hello, everyone, and welcome to Easy Library Budget Tracking. And thanks for joining us today or watching this recording. Uh, my name is Shauna. I use she, they pronouns, and I am the Outreach and Continuing Education Consultant at the Southwest Wisconsin Library System. And uh, before we get started, um, a couple of reminders. This program is being recorded and it will be sent to you later today. And also we love hearing feedback from you. So please consider taking the survey that will be sent to you once the program is complete. Um, and feel free to contact me anytime about topics or outreach or continuing education at uh, SWS. Um, Jen can also be contacted at any time, our presenter today, about ILS settings or problems, best practices, questions, interlibrary loan issues. Um, and fun fact, for 10 years, Jen held her high school's pole vault record, which I actually just learned what that is. Um, <laughs> and lastly, if you need any assistance, please feel free to use the chat box today. I will be monitoring it for us. And with that, I will pass it along to Jen. All right. I am hoping that you are able to see my screen at this point. Um, we can, we can see it. Wonderful. Thanks. And welcome everybody. And thanks for joining me for Easy Library Budget Tracking. Um, today's presentation is going to be centered around using Excel to track your small or mid-sized library's budget. But if you have something different, if you use QuickBooks already, that's totally fine. I think that a lot of the concepts here are very transferable and it's important that you use something that you feel comfortable with because you're more likely to keep up with it. Before we get started, I want you to know that questions are very welcome. If you have one, um, I think everybody is muted right now. You can either unmute yourself and ask, or you can pop it right in the chat box and I'll get to it right away. So here's a quick overview of what we're gonna discuss today. For those who don't already know me, I started working in libraries just over 13 years ago, and I spent seven of those years as a library director in Lancaster, Wisconsin. Um, I've now been the ILS and ILL consultant at SWLS for almost two years. When I became the director in Lancaster, I walked into a pretty organized situation, which was really helpful for getting my feet under me. But over the years, I learned some really great strategies for staying organized financially throughout the year. For background, um, Lancaster is a municipality of about 3,700 people and they also have a contracted branch library in the nearby town of Potosi. So um, over those years, I had to maintain both libraries budgets separately, but report on them on the annual report together. In my current position, I work with libraries on their annual reports in all aspects. And I often um, work with them specifically in how to track their budgets better for the next year after they go through the hassle of trying to figure it out for their annual report. Mm -hmm. I also teach a continuing education course called B Building Your Management Toolkit through the UW-Madison's iSchool. Um, throughout this presentation, I'm gonna probably talk about Excel like it's my baby or like I'm trying to sell it to you. And I promise Microsoft is not paying me. I just really like it. Um, if you have a different program, like I said, the key is just diligent upkeep. Um, we all know that if something's not maintained, like your collection or like your facility, it's a lot harder to dig out of the hole. And that goes for budgeting as well. Um, we're doing this presentation in January. So you all have a chance to make a fresh start. You don't have months and months and months of backlog to try and wade through to decide um, to start budgeting this way. From there, if you keep up every month, you're gonna be thrilled with how easy it is to know exactly where your library stands and filling out the annual report next year is gonna be a breeze. So let's start with state statutes. Um, statutes are really clear about the fact that your library board has exclusive control of any money appropriated to the library. 
That includes municipal appropriations, county reimbursements, and any gift or donation funds that are dedicated to the library. The part that often gets in the way of that is that the library fund is also held by your municipality or your county, depending on your situation. And I see two common problems that result from this weird kind of like two pronged, like who's in charge of what thing. Um, the first and most common problem is that the municipality holds the money and therefore they just pay bills and other expenses without the explicit approval of the library board. And library staff and the board sometimes are in the loop, but sometimes they're not. And sometimes they're not actively involved or directing that payment. In practice, it seems more efficient or easier to just let the village or the city handle it because that's what they do. Um, they have the money, they have to write the check, like why not just let them take care of it? It's not the right way to handle library finances and it can lead to the second common problem, which is a little bit more serious. And that is when the municipality starts deciding how money should be spent out of the library fund, outside or even in spite of board approval. So it's kind of like a slippery slope. The more on top of your budget you're, you are, the less likely it is to be misused or for the municipality to feel ownership over it when really they only have ownership over the accounts that your money is stored in. Um, now, let's be honest here. The municipality has a lot of options at their disposal to control how a library spends its money. Just because they aren't allowed to say yes or no to a certain you know, budget item doesn't mean they don't have any power. The most powerful tool they have obviously is lowering the municipal appropriation. And this is why I strongly believe in building respectful and trusting relationships with your municipality, with your clerk for sure, but your village board or your mayor, whoever might be um, in control that, that has a hand in what your library is appropriated. Um, I really truly believe in transparency whenever possible, especially with finances. It is still largely taxpayer dollars. And so you have a responsibility to report what it's being spent on. Um, but once an appropriation is dedicated to the library, the municipality does not get to dictate how the library chooses to spend that money on library operations. And if it goes on unchecked for long enough, the road back becomes really painful and really contentious between the library and the municipality. And that's where you start seeing kind of um, us versus them when you look at that relationship. And that's not what you want because it's harder for everybody to get things done. Um, so building good boundaries can be helpful um, on both sides. And if you're working back from like a predecessor's bad relationship, it's really important to offer up transparency even when you're not technically required to um, because it will really smooth things over with your municipality. So that leads us to why it's important to keep your own records. Um, tracking your own expenses throughout the year doesn't mean that you're not gonna work with your municipality or your clerk to get updates from them about your budget. Um, and a lot of times, if you are paying utilities out of the library budget, those utilities run through your city anyway. So you're going to have to rely on them for those numbers. Um, but it does mean that you don't have to rely on your village, your municipality to know exactly where you stand at any given time. And I think most of us have been in a situation where we have a question about our expenditures or kind of like where our budget's at and you reach out to your municipal clerk and you get no response or a delayed response or an incomplete response. And it can be really frustrating depending on the urgency of that request or depending on the history of that relationship. And it can, it can breed mistrust if you don't feel like you're getting the answers you need. So instead, take your budget into your own hands. Ask for written monthly updates and make sure to explicitly request information on the things that you can't gather for yourself, like benefits costs, utilities that are shared or split up with some formula. Um, if you're in a shared facility, a lot of times you know, you'll split the electricity or heating costs. 
So get those updates in writing and try and get them every single month. The reason I started doing this a lot more diligently when I started as the director in Lancaster is because at the end of my first year, I got the city's expenditure report back and I was shocked to see that there was several accounts super far off. I'm talking thousands and thousands of dollars, either over budget or under budget. And it was just a huge mess. And it took weeks to dig through that entire year to figure out what went wrong. Um, we finally discovered the two major discrepancies. First, all of the library employees' health insurance payments were being attributed to our electricity line, which is ridiculous, um, but it was an easy mistake to fix. Second, which is harder to fix, a lot of public works bills were being attributed to a library count line improperly. And that took time for them to back out and it caused a lot of headaches for the auditor at the end of the year on the city side as well. So had I been keeping my own accounts and balancing throughout the year, we'd have caught that right away and saved us both um, a lot of headaches. So let's take a look at the general calendar flow um, for your budget activities. Can everybody see everything well? I don't know if I'm like in the way here. It looks good I know for good. most of you, the budget, Okay, great. Yeah. Um, I know that for most of you, the budget's only one of the very many things that you're responsible for. So your calendar is gonna be a lot fuller than just these like seven things. Um, but I wanna show you how simple it can be to structure your budget work. I recommend that in December of every year, you start creating clean copies of any spreadsheets you use throughout the next calendar year. So for me, that always meant a new payroll spreadsheet, a new month by month budget spreadsheet, um, a new annual report maintenance spreadsheet, um, and then some other forms that we used internally. It helped me feel ready to tackle the next year. And it also re relieves some of the pressure in January when you're really working on starting the new year off, starting new projects in your library and getting your annual report done. Um, in my experience, it really also helped me take a hard look at what the year ahead was going to look like. So if you have a larger budget or a smaller budget than the previous year, you can think about how that's going to look each month and where those changes are going to be. So here's the thing that I think I've already said a whole bunch of times, but it bears repeating. Make an appointment on your calendar every single month and spend that time entering your expenses and any revenue that you get into a monthly tracking spreadsheet. Um, I use Excel, I highly recommend it for those of you who don't already have like a QuickBooks or another type of budgeting software. It's really easy to learn. There are tons of tutorials online. I actually even found a TikTok account dedicated to Excel shortcuts, um, which is a very nerdy thing to admit, I understand. <laughs> And it's super customizable to what you actually need to track. Um, I'm gonna show you a simplified version of the template that I used in Lancaster, just taking all of that library branch element out of it because that kind of complicated things. So this template is gonna be available to you if you choose to use it um, as your method of budget tracking at your library. Um, and the template has three sheets attached to it. The first is just a month by month tracking form it has all of your line items or accounts listed down the left side, and then space for you to enter every month's expenses by line. Um, the, the formulas at the right side total your monthly expenses. It totals your year-to-date expenses, a percentage, and shows you um, what's left. Staff wages is typically where I start seeing fewer people like not along. I know I don't see a lot of cameras on, but a lot of you maybe were tracking your actual expenses, but how many of you were keeping track down to the penny what your staff wages were? If you're not tracking staff wage expenses yourself, I'm asking you to start. It's probably the largest expense your library has every year, and it's essential to know where you stand. Um, the pandemic, I'm sure all of you have experienced, has wreaked havoc on staff levels 
um, people being in, people being out, people taking unpaid time off because they're sick or because of some other reason, um, it means that what you budgeted for staff might be wildly different than what you're actually spending for staff. And it's important to know that on an ongoing basis because then you know how to adjust throughout the rest of the year and you're not in a crunch in like November, December. How I managed to keep up with staff wages is to average out how many hours each staff person worked in a pay period. In Lancaster, we were paid every other week. So it was a two week pay period that I averaged and I tracked it. Um, the template that I'm gonna show you tracks how far over or under budget you are for each staff category, as well as your total over and under on an ongoing basis. So you know exactly how much money's left that should have been spent that wasn't spent or how much you're over budget. Um, when you get partway through the year, you realize you have a lot of money unspent. Maybe you can add hours for some staff or get some additional help on a limited term basis if your board approves that. Um, and if you're running over budget, you can make strategic decisions about when you cut back so that you have the least effect on your operation. So keeping track of your finances for the annual report, that's really our ultimate goal, right? Get everything in order so that when we get that annual report, it's like choo, 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 and you're done. Um, you, have it, you have to have it complete by the end of February. And a lot of times DPI doesn't open it until like the second to last or even the last week in January, meaning you have either six weeks or less than six weeks to get everything in the form and get everything right and approved by your board. And if you're relying on your municipality to answer these questions, you don't have a lot of wiggle room to be checking their work or looking for discrepancies. And you're a lot li more limited to, by what information they're willing to offer and the timeline by which they provide it. So for those of you who fear or despise the annual report season, I'm hoping that these tracking methods are going to alleviate those feelings of anxiety. Annual report time is actually my absolute favorite time of the year. Um, I love data anyway, so that's you know part of it, but budgeting doesn't have to be scary. And if, you're, if you've kept up, it's so satisfying to be like, look at this 11 page report, I'm gonna be done in an hour. Um, so if you're not stressed about getting all those pieces in order at the very end of the year and straightening out the entire year's worth of finances, you get to start enjoying all of that data and seeing what it means, what it means as a snapshot about your library for the year. Um, so the third sheet on my Excel template will help take the burden of those financial sections of the annual report and move them away from those few weeks at the beginning of the year. Um, and instead, you're gonna have almost everything you need from the year listed on that one page. All right, now we're gonna head over to the template I've been talking about so much um, so that you can see it live and see some of the features. I wanna mention that for this presentation, I've increased the font size of everything, but it's still an Excel spreadsheet. So if it's too small, know that you're gonna have um, access to this spreadsheet and you'll be able to look at it on your own um, and see things a little bit more clearly. I will also be including this slideshow and my notes on the slideshow with the recording of the presentation that Shauna sends out afterwards. So if you want to review anything that we discussed at the beginning, um, you'll have access to all of that. So give me a second. All right, let me know when Excel pops up. Ooh. Did for a second, I bet. How's that? Yeah, not quite. Is not popping up? Not yet. We'll figure it out. <laughs> All right. I don't want that anymore. Maybe it's the window you're sharing. I am going to... Yeah, it looks like it's frozen here. I'm gonna try to yeah. 
Shauna, can you try to take control back from me? Yeah, I can do that. Because I think that my second screen is frozen here. Sure. Um, whoops. Let's see. Let that work. Sorry about this, everybody. Does anyone have any questions while we're trying to get here? Here's Montfort Public Library's Facebook page. <laughs> All right. Then if I stop sharing. Yeah. My, it looks like my Zoom may have frozen. Okay. Um, Wow. Let me see here. All right. Um, I'm sorry, you know again. <laughs> Shauna, I am going to bounce right back in. Give me just one second. If people have questions, no um, now's a great time to ask when I'm not watching. <laughs> no problem. Thanks for your patience, everyone. I wonder what everyone's favorite and least favorite thing is about um, um, annual report time. <clears throat> All right, Shauna, can you tell me if that is showing up now? Yeah, it's great. It is. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> nice work. Wonderful. Great recovery. <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody. Um, task manager to the rescue. So what we are looking at here is page one of my budget tracking template. And as you can see, um, down the left-hand side were all of my line items, my, my budget. Um, and I color-coded everything for my own, you know, like peace of mind, I guess. Yellow would be salaries um, and wages. Anything that's listed in green means that I needed to get it from my city. Um, so all of the benefits, as well as um, most of my utilities, and I also paid um, my portion of property and liability insurance, as well as a stipend every year for public works for lawn and snow care. So I just have those lines in there um, with how much I paid the city for those, for those services. Um, and then something I also wanna bring your attention to is I only had one line for collection and in my budget spreadsheet tracking, I split it up based on what the annual report asks for. So that every month I would just write in, in each line, what I spent so that at the end of the year, those numbers were already there and I wouldn't have to go back through all my invoices and figure out, okay, book, 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 DVD, DVD, audiobook, audiobook. Um, they're just all already done. Um, it really split up that kind of hassle. Um, and then as we scroll down, I also had a checking account. We called it the fine fund, but really it was just for small gifts and donations. Um, and I made sure to track that as well, because when you get to the annual report, one of the questions is all other operating income and all other operating expenditures. And that checking account is included. So I made sure to make space for that. Um, and because we didn't budget anything in that checking account, we used it kind of like petty cash. 
So it wouldn't be included above in my overall budget for the year. Um, if I scroll this way, you can see it'll total my expenditures. All I did at the beginning of the year is enter my budget numbers down this line, what I had budgeted in each line item. And then the formulas took care of what's remaining, what percent I expended, and how much I expended in total. So if I did 4,500, So as I enter each month's expenditures, it does the math for me. Um, and you can see like in an instant, exactly where you stand. Moving on to the part-time payroll page. This one looks a little more complicated, but it depends on how much staff you have and how much detail you want. Um, so I left in a bunch of numbers so that you could kind of see how it tracks. Um, down the left hand side, I put all of my staff members and when I used this, I used their names. Um, but for purposes of sharing this with everybody, I took their names out and just put their positions instead. It includes their hourly wage and the average number of hours they worked per pay period. Um, and then this automatically, like I'll fill in, you know, she worked 51 hours. This pay period. Um, it totals how many hours our staff worked in total, the total um, hours or total wages that were paid. And you can see if you look in the formula line above, um, it does math based on what their wage is, how many hours they worked. Um, so it calculated it for me. This is the one where you'll have to do some setup the first time, but it'll get easier as you go. If you decide to use this and you want a hand setting this stuff up because you don't feel confident um, with Excel formulas or something like that, I am super happy to help you. Um, and we can set up time, whether you're in SWLS or not, I'm happy to help anybody set this up because I promise it's so worth it. Um, below, I actually had, because I cared a lot about details, by position, whether we were over or under budget, um, because sometimes you know somebody that was an assistant two would fill in for an assistant one on a day, and that costs more. Um, but then I also have a net over and under running total. You can see I've just highlighted that. And this gave me a live update every time I filled in a pay period of how much money I either overspent in staff wages or have underspent in staff wages. So at the beginning of the year, I was over, over, over. And then I started being under. Um, and then as we scroll, you'll see that even when I'm over in one category, my net is still on the positive side, which means I have some money. So maybe June 1st, I have 500 or $450 here maybe I can give one of our shelvers some extra hours to help out with summer library program because I've got a little money, you know, as a cushion. Um, and then obviously it stops being helpful if you haven't filled out the data because this is the average number of how many hours or how much pay we're supposed to be. So it makes it look like we're way under budget. Well, we are because we haven't finished the year. Um, down below, I have a few things here. I have total hours worked by position, and then the total salaries or wages that were paid out per position. Um, and then, oh, this is just a leftover um, because I had to split things up by Potosi Fund and Lancaster Fund. Um, so this one is maybe the most confusing the first time, but once you get all those formulas in, um, it'll really give you a very clear picture after every pay period, what you've got to work with. The third sheet here is annual report tracking. And this one is one that I think, whether or not you use the rest of it, consider this. 
um, consider using this. So I pulled the entire financial section out of the annual report and made it into this handy spreadsheet. Anything in green, you should know that. The first day of January, you should know it. Um, what's your local appropriation? What are you getting from your home county, from any other counties? Um, what state funding are you carrying into the new year? Um, so anything that's in green, you should just fill it out. Do it now, because then you don't have to remember. You don't have to think about it. It's already ready to go for your annual report. Um, anything that's in yellow, when you do your monthly budgeting, take a visit to this page and think, did I get any state funding? Did I get something from my system that was paid for by state dollars? Did I get a grant? Um, if you did, add it. Um, and then just keep it as a total. If it's red, that means it's gonna auto-populate on the annual report. So all you have to do at the end of the year is make sure that matches the number you were expecting it to be. Moving on to the expenditures portion. Um, what I did, and you can see here, I had put a bunch of stuff in that first spreadsheet, that update by month. The, these orange ones formulate from what I had entered before. So my salaries and wages, if I click on it, you can see it pulls update my, by month 02 and update by month 03. That means on this sheet, it pulls the total expended in regular and the total expended in part-time staff. So I don't have to do the math again, it's doing it for me. Same with benefits. I just added the sum of all of these benefit lines. So as long as I'm keeping track throughout the year, it's doing the math for me and populating that. Um, and here is the reason I kept my print, electronic, AV, and other materials separately, because the annual report asks for them separately. So as long as I kept track all year long, it's gonna give me a populated total that I don't have to stress about. And I think that's one of the mm. most useful things is keeping track throughout the year by, you know, you know they're gonna ask. So just keep track as you go and it's a lot less burdensome. Moving down that one, um, obviously a subtotal will auto-populate. Um, but your system contracts, you should know those January 1st. So put them in January 1st. Put them in your um, spreadsheet so that you don't have to go looking for them later. Um, if you have any other contracts, um, for example, in my situation, we had a contract with the Potosi Village so that we could provide library services there. And I knew what that contract dollar amount was, so I put it in right away. Um, and then other operating expenditures, if you have anything throughout the year, um, you can either choose to fill this one out now, like as you go, or you could do it at the end of the year um, because you'll have everything on your spreadsheet. And then here just asks for federal expenditures. So if you get an LSTA grant or if you benefit from one, as soon as you get that funding, just stick it in there. As soon as you spend it, stick it in here. Same goes for any capital expenses. This is just the capital expenditures and other funds and trust funds. Um, by doing it as you go, it's gonna really like reduce the burden of trying to figure out all of those things from the entire year. So, that is all I have for this spreadsheet. Does anybody have any questions about the spreadsheet before I pop back to my um, PowerPoint? Maybe I, I gotta pull up this. Yes, I heard also that January 24th is the target date that the annual report will be open. Um, right now you can probably open last year's if you try to log in, it'll pull up last year's annual report so you can look at it. 
um, but your next year's report uh, may or may not show up. And if it does, I wouldn't trust it until DPI says so, because they're still making changes to the stuff in the background. Um, so I would wait until you get that official like, hey, it's open. All right, a question on, do you track details on your line items before entering? Um, can you give me an example of that? Oh, I understand. So what my budget process was when I had to pay my bills is I received all of my invoices to my library. Um, some libraries have them sent straight to their village hall. I didn't, everything came to me. And what I gave to my board each month was called list of bills. And it by these line items would list the vendor, the invoice number, the amount, and then often it would have a little note saying, this was for adult books, this was for kids books, this was for um, the heater went out. So I did do that every single month and I kept, so I kept the monthly list of bills with all of that detail, which my board saw. Um, and then I kept a copy of that on top of the invoices that I handed to village or to the city hall when I asked them to cut checks for me. So it was like a summary of what they were about to see. And that kind of um, clarified for your board, if you just see, you know, $19,000, what is that? Um, it said what it was. Does that answer your question? Perfect. Does anybody else have any questions? If you have a contract or something where it's a recurring payment of the same amount every month, um, what I did, because I had that, I had um, a janitor contract and it was 350. And so I, at the very beginning of the year, would go all the way across and just like fill them in because I knew that was something I was going to have to pay. And then I didn't feel like that money was available to me. So if you know an exact amount and when it's due, you can put it in if you wish early so that you're not counting on those dollars. Um, Patty, you asked, is my, is my template customizable? I'm giving you the raw template, like the, the raw Excel spreadsheet. So you can customize it any way you want. Um, and like I said, um, this worked for me. If you need help, making the formulas work after you put in like the accounts or anything you need, um, please just reach out. I'm happy to help. The goal of like offering up this template is to see that it works, but you can change whatever you need to change to make it work for you. So I'm not giving you just like a PDF version. I'm gonna give you the actual Excel spreadsheet. All right, then let's go back. And can you tell me, do you see that um, PowerPoint again? Yes, I can see the PowerPoint. Haha, <laughs> we did it right this time. Nice work. <laughs> All right, so. I am about done. I almost never finish early. So I'm very thrilled with myself for being able to finish early with plenty of time for questions. Um, I have my contact information right here. Like I said, a copy of these slides with all of my notes will be sent to you with the recording in case you wanna review it or you wanna reach out to me. And I also included some additional resources here as a last slide. Um, the DPI administrative essentials is less commonly talked about than the trustee essentials. The trustee ones are very, very helpful. It helps your board understand their role and all of their powers and responsibilities. 
The DPI's administrative essentials is so useful. Um, it's clear language, it's understandable, but it really gives you insight into the statutes that you are bound by. Um, a lot of responsibilities, financial management responsibilities. And um, I just really found it very valuable when I was starting, but also, you know, five years down the road, I found myself checking in there um, to make sure I was kind of on the right track. Um, I also have some books listed here, Mastering Excel, just because I think it's a fabulous book. Um, but like I said before, there are a lot of online tutorials that'll get you through learning Excel if you don't feel confident. Um, and then there's also a few books that are really useful if you want to take a step further and really um, think more about your budgeting philosophy and your process. Um, all of those books are available, I know, in SWLS, so anybody can get them through WISCAD if they don't have them in their own systems. Um, so I will open it up. Does anybody have any questions or comments or anecdotes to share? I bet there's an anecdote or two about doing annual reports. Here's a question. Did I ever feel like I was duplicating work done by the clerk? Yes, I did. Um, but did I feel it was important? Absolutely. Um, because the clerk uses um, municipal software, I didn't have access to see what he saw. And I didn't have access to um, look at details unless he felt like sh sharing. Um, and I really felt like my board deserved to know what was going on. And, and I didn't necessarily um, think that it was a, a good way to handle business, that it would take like three weeks to a month to get an answer. If there was just a simple question about like, how much money is left in the wage line? Um, so by tracking it myself, yes, like he's tracking it as well, but then I already had the answers. I didn't have to wait and try and like get the answers. Jody says, I've found tracking on my own and balancing with the municipality every month to be extremely important. It's easier to remedy errors on a monthly basis than at year end. I would totally agree with that. Um, I think that it's super important. And because your board ultimately is responsible for what you're spending, I think it's a good habit for them to be uber informed. Um, and remedying errors on the fly, like in March, is a lot easier than having to dig through 10 months of um, invoices and billing and wages to try and figure out what happened. Roxanne said the village clerk and the library share an employee. And I don't quite know how to approach her on how monies are tracked. And she also, oh, she often forgets to put her earnings on the ledger for part-timers, but lists the total earnings on our checks paid line. That is a tricky one. Um, it's a really delicate relationship, isn't it? So I think that starting this year, if you go in and say, New year, new year, new resolution. I am going to take control of our library's budget. I'm trying this new thing that I just learned and I really need your help um, so that I can do this really well. And hopefully they'll want to help because they're being asked, not because they're being required. Um, and I think after a few months, 
hopefully it feels less prickly because it becomes a routine. I know that when I started asking questions, especially about um, why is my electricity so high? Why is this so high? Why are you charging us for this? Um, it felt really prickly, but after a while, they just kind of saw that I was just trying to keep track. Um, is it wrong of me for her to write two checks? Um, how do you mean by two checks? Like one for her library work and one for... Okay, no, I think that that's, I think that's um, reasonable because they're two separate accounts that that money's coming out of, right? Or if only one check is being cut to her, um, you should see some sort of statement that says, only this amount is being charged to the library. So there should be transparency on which account those monies are coming from if they're combining a check or if they're working for two entities. I think in a lot of small communities, um, people share staff. So that's probably not very unusual. You're welcome. All right. Can I ask how many of you have a quiet place to go work on this and how many of you are doing it at the front desk when you're also helping patrons? Because I think that makes it feel even more burdensome because I have found that when I'm working on the budget, interruptions feel harder. I definitely notice my uh, attitude towards the patrons is not as pleasant if I get interrupted while I'm doing the annual report. So I, I need the quiet time. All right, we have a couple people saying they have their own offices and it does make a world of difference. Okay. No office, it's very open. I get interrupted a lot. No office. I recognize a few of you, a few of you have one room and it's everything. So I can understand that it can feel really overwhelming if you're trying to dig into this um, when you're also like manning the front desk or trying to do it and there's a story time. Wonderful, thank you all for sharing. All right, I will do a last call. Does anybody have any final questions? Um, I'll go back up to my contact information here. So again, you'll get all of this. Ellen says she always does her annual report on the weekend where there's no interruptions. All right, thank you all. Shauna, do you have any final notes or reminders you wanna give anybody? Nope, but you'll be receiving an email from me with um, Jen's information and template and so, and a survey. So that's, that's who I am in your inbox. And thank you so much everyone for coming today um, and for your great questions and comments. All right. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Take care.